What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Words of Wisdom. Here we are on day twenty, uh, day twenty-two, August twenty-twenty, Proverbs twenty-two. A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. And name, we know name is more than just our written out name, what we're called. Um, we read in the Strong's here, the word is Shem, or Hashem. Well, Hashem is the name. So it's Shem, base, infamous, renowned. And we look at the definition over here, studylight.org. Uh, name, of course, what we're called, but reputation, fame, glory. Just think about it like this. Well, basically, whenever we see name in the Bible, we do this in His name. We praise His name, the name of God. It's, uh, as we see here, reputation, fame, glory. Think about it like, for instance, a restaurant. If someone get, leaves a bad review of a restaurant, that gives them a bad name, bad, you know, reputation. But uh, when it comes to the name of God, it's his... His reputation, his character, his authority. And same in regard to this. A good name is to be required, is, is to be desired, more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. And the NIV reads that is. A good name is to be more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. But not to be esteemed by men, but esteemed by God. Because who cares what people think of us? Other than, I mean, we don't want to look bad. We don't want to make God look bad. But really, who cares about the opinions of people? The approval of people. It's uh, what matters is the approval of God, and that shows us what what we're doing is right or not. A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have a common bond. Yahuwah, the Lord, is maker of them all. See, no matter if, no matter what status we have, no matter if we're rich or poor, at the end of the day, God made us all. And God is going to judge us all according to the same standards. The prudent sees the evil and hides himself. But the naive go on and are punished for it. So the prudent or the wise see the evil or the wrong and hides himself. But the naive or foolish go on and are punished for it. I mean, this could apply in a couple different ways. But the prudent or the wise see the evil, see the wrong, see the sin, and hides himself, avoids it. But the naive or the simple, the foolish, go on and are punished for it. Or for example, the coming tribulation time. Jesus told us to make ourselves ready. Make sure we're right with him and ready for his return. And if we're wise, we're going to see the evil come in and hide ourselves. But the naive, naive are just going to go on and be punished for it. 
the reward of humility and the fear of Yahuwah are riches, honor, and life. Hallelujah. Humility. See, God hates pride. Who are we to be prideful? We have to be humble. The re reward of humility and the fear of Yahuwah, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of understanding. And it's the fear of God that, along with the love of God, uh, that, that brings us to faith. Because once we realize we're under the law of sin and death, once we realize we're under the punishment, which is death, we seek a savior. The reward of humility and the fear of Yahuwah are riches, honor, and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. He who guards himself will be far from them. Now, I've spoken, up, spoken in some other videos about the thorns and also the snares. The thorns and the snares. The thorns represent some of the false prophets. And the snares are what was being set for believers in these end days. We read here in Joshua twenty three thirteen. Know with certainty that Yahuwah your God will not continue to drive these nations out from before you, but there will be a snare and a trap to you, and a whip on your sides and thorns in your eyes, until you perish off the good land which Yahuwah your God has given you. So this is if we continue in sin, if, if we're in the way of the perverse, then traps are going to be set in our, our way. The thorns are going to be hurting us. And we know these nations that it's speaking of here, we're going to read the same thing here in Judges 2-3. Therefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from, from before you, but they will become as thorns in your sides, and their gods will be a snare to you. And we know these nations that it's speaking of, there's a reason that God had the Israelites wipe them all out. And that's because they weren't all f fully human. And it's the same thing that we see in these end days as well. Ezekiel 2.6 And you, son of man, neither fear them nor fear their words. Though thistles and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions, neither fear their words nor be dismayed at their presence, for they are a rebellious house. Now this is speaking about the house of Israel, which is believers and the whole house of Israel is believers and Jews in end time Bible prophecy in Matthew thirteen twenty two, and the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns this is the man who hears the word and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful this is because it's the false prophets they hear the word but the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful because that, that's what they're getting from their teachers from the false prophets from the thorns so the thorns are tied to both of these things to false prophets and to uh the other thing I just mentioned. Thorns and snares are in a way of the perverse. He who guards himself will be far from them. 
So if we guard ourselves, if we guard our hearts, if we're right with God, if we're living for God, all that's going to be far from us. And God is going to be behind us and have our back. But if we stray from the path and start doing wickedness and have a heart that's perverse, then the thorns and the snares are going to be in our path. And I've spoken about the snares in a lot of videos, or at least a few videos. Because there's a lot of snares being set for believers in these last days. Uh, especially for certain individuals who are targeted, targeted, targeted individuals, which I'm one of those. I don't know if any anybody listening is really familiar with that, other than uh, agents listening. God bless you guys. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And this is sound wisdom. As we know, Proverbs is wisdom. It's all about wisdom. Because Solomon was the wisest man to live. The Bible says God gave him a discerning and a wiser heart than anyone before him and anyone that would come after him. And this also applies to us as children of God. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. That's why we need to learn the ways of God. And follow God fully with our whole heart. The rich rules over the poor. And the borrower becomes the lender's slave. And this is going to be the same in the kingdom. Well, this is the same these days. That rich rule, rule over the poor. And a borrow be, borrower becomes the lender's slave. And the lender, on another level of understanding, the lender is going to be the, the rich man. And, and if we lend to the poor in this life, we're stacking up riches in heaven. And the borrower, God speaks against borrowing, and we're going to see that later in the chapter, against uh, becoming, against promising people money, basically. He who sows iniquity or sin will reap vanity and the rod of his fury will perish speaking of his actions the iniquity all that will perish and he will reap vanity he who is generous will be blessed for he gives some of his food to the poor See, we need to bless those who are less fortunate than us. Because we know, as children of God, he, He's going to provide for us, no matter what. So if we can help bless those less, less fortunate, I mean, He's going to pay us back. In this life and in the next. We read in Proverbs 19.17, one who is gracious to a poor man lends to Yahuwah, lends to the Lord. And he will repay him for his good deed. So, giving to the poor, we're lending to God. We're lending our money to God. And he's just going to pay us back. Also in Proverbs twenty-eight, twenty-seven, He who gives to the poor will never want. But he who shuts his eyes will have many curses.
He who is generous will be blessed, for he gives some of his food to the poor. Drive out the scoffer, and contention will go out. Even strife and dishonor will cease. And anyone who's tried to preach the word of God, to, to preach the truth to an unbeliever who's just mocking and scoffing, knows this. We know that teaching scoffers, preaching the word to scoffers, we get contention, strife, and dishonor from them. But it is what it is. We need to pray for them and correct in gentleness. He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious, the king is his friend. And the king is Yeshua, that's Jesus. And Jesus said, My brethren are those who hear the word of God and do it. And what it all comes down to at the end of the day is purity, purity of heart, which is a circumcised heart. And that's what it's all about. It's about being right in our heart because we can physically carry out the commands. We can follow the letter of the law, but it's about the spirit of the law. It's about following God because we want to. Because we love Him. Not just because it's something we're supposed to do. He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious, the King is his friend. Hallelujah. The eyes of Yahuwah preserve knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the treacherous man. And the eyes, well, this is going back to the last, uh, last verse, Matthew 5, 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, so, for they shall see God. But about the eyes, it says, the eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. We read in Revelation 5, 6. And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So the eyes of the Lord that's the Spirit of the Lord. That's the Holy Spirit. The seven spirits of God. That's the fullness of the Holy Spirit. If we go over to Isaiah 11, verse 2, we get the seven spirits of the Lord. We get the seven eyes mentioned in Revelation 5, 6. The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. That's one. The Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of Yahuwah. The spirit of wisdom, two, understanding, three, the spirit of counsel, four, and strength, five, the spirit of knowledge, six, and the fear of the Lord, fear of Yahuwah, seven, the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. The eyes of Yahuwah preserve knowledge. But he overthrows the words of the treacherous man. The sluggard says, There is a lion outside. I will be killed in the streets. And we, we know the sluggard, that's one who's considered foolish, one of the foolish virgins who aren't right, aren't ready, aren't right with God. And the lion. Either way, the lion can represent God or Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, or the devil. The devil rolls around as a roaring lion. 
The slugger says there, there's a line outside. I would be killed in the streets. Worried about it. Because they're not right with God. The mouth of an adulteress is a deep pit. He who is cursed of Yahuwah will fall into it. And as we've spoken about in some of the other scriptures, the adulteress, that's the false prophets, which are also foolish virgins. At least some of them. The mouth of an adulteress is a deep pit, so that's a foolish, that's a false prophets. If you listen to their words, you're, you fall into a deep pit. And he who is cursed of Yahuwah will fall into it. But praise God. Praise God for his blessings. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. And, you know, there's also, as we've been seeing, there's, you know, the, the basic surface level understanding of when a child is, has foolishness built up in, in him the rod of discipline will remove it but also us being children of God if we're foolish one of the foolish virgins we're going to receive the, receive the rod of discipline to remove that sin far from us He who oppresses the poor to make more for himself or who gives to the rich will only come to poverty. We need to treat others like we want to be treated. We need to love. Incline your ear and hear the words of the wise and apply your mind to my knowledge and the words of the wise and his knowledge his knowledge is Jesus that's and also his word same with the understanding and, and wisdom it's all references to Jesus and his word incline your ear and hear the words of the wise and apply your mind to my knowledge. For it will be pleasant if you keep them within you. See, we need to meditate on the Word of God. Study it. Seek to know Him. For it will be pleasant if, they, if you keep them within you. So that they may be ready on your lips. So that your trust may be in Yahuwah. I have taught you today, even you... Have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge to make you know the certainty of the words of truth that you may correctly answer him who sent you? And this is what we read about here in 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks, to give you, asks you to give an account of the hope that is in you yet with gentleness and reverence. So again, incline your ear and hear the words of the wise and apply your mind to knowledge. For it will be pleasant if you keep them within you, that they may be on your lips, so that your trust may be in Yahuwah. I have taught you today, even you. Have I not commanded you excellent things of counsels and knowledge? to make you know the certainty of the words of truth that you may correctly answer him who sent you? And the words of truth, we know the truth. John seventeen seventeen, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Psalm 119, 142, and 160. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. And 160. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous ordinances is everlasting. 
And of course, here in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And that's what it's referring to here. It's, it's about following God and keeping his word. following, Keeping his commandments, following his word. One more time, incline your ear and hear the, hear the words of the wise and apply your mind to knowledge, which is the truth, which is the word of God, which is Jesus. For it will be pleasant if you keep them within you, that, you may be, that they may be ready on your lips, that you may trust, so that your trust may be in Yahuwah. I have taught you today, even you, have I not written you excellent things of counsels and knowledge? To make you know the certainty of the words of truth, that you may correctly answer him who sent you. And he who sent us is God, is Jesus. And we're all going to have to answer to him at the end of the day. Do not rob the poor because he is poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate, at the gate because the gate, that's where many, many of the poor would sit and ask for money, it's like, in the same way people these days stand on a corner at a stoplight or in a median at a stoplight. Do not rob the poor because he is poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For Yahuwah will plead their case, and take the life of those who rob them. Do not associate with a man given to anger, or go with a hot-tempered man, or you will learn his ways and find a snare for yourself. We read in 2 Corinthians verse 6, or chapter 6. Do not be bound together with the unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Belial? And what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? For what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you. And we know association brings similarity, breeds similarity. So do not associate with a man given to anger, or you will or go with a hot tempered man, or you will learn his ways. And find a snare for yourself. Do not be among those who give pledges. Among those who become, become guarantors for debts. If you have nothing with which to pay, why should he take your bed from under you? And this is what I mentioned earlier. It's not wise to... To pledge to pay someone money later. To agree to pay someone money later. You run into all kind of problems. And I know, I know that from experience. Do not move the ancient boundary which your fathers have set. And we read this in Deuteronomy 19. You shall not move your neighbor's boundary mark, which your ancestors have set, and your inheritance which you will inherit in the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess. But we know that they will. They will move the boundary stone. They will, through this peace deal, create a Palestinian state, a country called Palestine in the land of Israel that he gave back to them over the last 70 years. 
And we know this is going to happen. It's in the scriptures. We read in Joel 3, verse 2. I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Then I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and they have divided up my land. And the dividing of the land, from my understanding, is the breaking of the everlasting covenant, which we see in different scriptures. The covenant is what we read here in Psalm 105. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac, then he confirmed it to Jacob for a statute. To Israel is an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance. So, when they move the boundary stone, when they divide the land, it's going to be breaking this everlasting covenant. God said, I'm going to give you this land, and they willingly give it away. And it's a wrap. We read here in Isaiah 24. Behold, Yahuwah lays the earth waste, devastates it, distorts its surface, and scatters its inhabitants. And the people will be like the priest, the servant like his master, the maid like her mistress, the buyer like the seller, the lender like the borrower, the creditor like the debtor. The earth will be completely laid waste and completely despoiled. For Yahuwah has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers. The world fades and withers. The exalted of the, peop of the people of the earth fade away. The earth is also polluted by its inhabitants, for they transgressed laws, violated statutes, broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and those who live in it are held guilty. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. And this is what happens at the beginning of the day of the Lord. This is what happens when they're saying peace and safety, and sudden destruction comes. We also read in Isaiah 33, Behold, their brave men cry in the streets. The ambassadors of peace weep bitterly. And that's the, I believe, the people who are a part of this uh, Trump peace team led by Jared Kushner and with many others involved. The, ambass the ambassadors of peace weep bitterly. The highways are desolate. The traveler has ceased. He has broken the covenant. He has despised the cities. He has no regard for man. Ezekiel 17 But he rebelled against him by sending his envoys to Egypt, that they might give him horses and many troops. Will he succeed? And Egypt is a representation of the U.S. Will he who does such things escape? Can he indeed break the covenant and escape? As I live, declares the Lord God, surely in the country of the king who has put him on the throne, whose oath he, he despised and whose covenant he broke, in Babylon he shall die. Pharaoh with his mighty army and his great company will not help him in the war, when they cast up ramps and build siege walls to cut off many lives, speaking of the Gog Magog war. And the dividing of the land is, is going to come through this major peace deal with many nations. We, we read in Daniel 9.27 And he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. But in the mil middle of the week he will put a stop to sacrificing grain offering and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate even to a complete destruction. One that, that is that's decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. And here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as later labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. And I have a video called Peace and Security on my YouTube channel going through some of these different scriptures. 
And I believe the delay is going on right now. The the delay that the Bible speaks about. And we're on the way to this happening. It's only a matter of time till this happens. The nations are beginning to make peace with Israel. If you haven't heard, the the UAE, United Arab Emirates, or Emiratis, however it's supposed to be pronounced, signed a peace agreement with Israel to normalize all ties. And it's believed that others are on the way to that. As we're going to read here in a second. Well, actually, let me just read this first and then I'll play the video. It says, Now that the ice has been broken, I expect more Arab and Muslim countries to follow the United Arab Emirates lead, says, says President Donald Trump on August 13th. When, a UAE, when the UAE became just the third Arab state after Egypt and Jordan to establish formal ties with Israel. The move was greeted with an approval by several of the region's leaders who have had long secret dealings with the Jewish state. So who will be the next to bring them in the open? A good bet is Oman, which congratulated Israel and the UAE, UAE on their agreement. So it's, it's believed that uh, some of these other Arab nations are going to come to the table and make peace with Israel. And it's only a matter of time until this covenant with many from Daniel 9 is signed. And that's what begins the end. That's when they're saying peace and safety or peace and security. Because I believe based on what we're seeing in the world, based on what they're actually saying, security is the better translation. Peace and security when they're saying peace and security, sudden destruction will come. And we read here on Rudus. Bahrain and Oman could be the next Gulf countries to follow the UAE in formalizing ties with Israel, Israel's intelligence minister said on Sunday. In the wake of this agreement will come additional agreements, both with more Gulf, Gulf countries and with Muslim countries in Africa, Intelligence Minister Eli Cohen told Army Radio. said, I think that Bahrain and Oman are definitely on the agenda. In addition to my assessment, there's a chance already in the coming year that there will be a peace deal in addition with additional countries in Africa, chief among them Sudan. And there's talk of Saudi Arabia making peace. And one of the only ones that isn't is going to be Iran. And according to Daniel chapter 8, Iran is going to be attacked before this deal is made. And pretty much stomped on. And I apologize if I sound like I'm yawning. I am. I, I, just, I don't know what it is. Uh, I just got extremely tired when I started making this video. But this is what is going on, and I'm going to just play this quick video before we finish the video. Well, I think what happened yesterday is a tremendous day. And, you know, our administration doesn't always agree with Tom Friedman, but I think that the column that he wrote was spot on. This is a massive change for the Middle East. President Trump does not take traditional approaches. I saw that in the lead up to this segment that people misinterpret him sometimes with the way that he's posturing on different things. But what you saw yesterday was... And before I finish, uh, this is who I believe is going to be the the prince in Daniel chapter 9 who signs this covenant with me. This is who I believe it is. Sometimes with the way that he's posturing on different things. But what you saw yesterday was the first peace deal in the Middle East in the last 26 years. I've been working on this very closely with President Trump over the last uh, three and a half years. It took a lot to get to this point, but this is a dramatic breakthrough 
that will make the Middle East safer. It means that less American troops will have to be over there. Uh, a lot of the past politicians created the instability. When President Trump got into office, uh, ISIS had a caliphate the size of Ohio. We had a lot of violence. We had a lot of terrorism. And President Trump's gotten very, very tough at it because his priority is protecting American citizens. So President Trump, the deal maker, had a very big victory yesterday and was able to bring our close ally, uh, the United Arab Emirates, together with our closest ally in the region, Israel, which will make America safer and the, region, and the whole region more hopeful. So this is the beginning. It's only a matter of time until all these other nations come to the table and they move the ancient boundary as spoken of here in Proverbs chapter 22. Do not move the ancient boundary which your fathers have set. But the man who was just speaking on this video, I believe is going to be the one, pretty much the one responsible for all this happening. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. And this is just in general. But also, for example, with, with, with Kushner, Trump said if if he can't get the deal done, no one can. And obviously he's skilled in his work that he's doing. And he's standing before kings. Trump. But in application to us, if we're skilled in what we do, which we know it's, it's not in us, it's not our ability, it's only God that works through us. We just have to be willing vessels. But if we're working for the kingdom and doing what we're supposed to be doing, stand before kings. And Yeshua is the king. And Jesus Christ is the king. He will not stand before obscure men. Let's be ready, brothers and sisters. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time till all this goes down. We're living in the last days. We're living in the final moments. And before this deal goes down, we're going to see the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 8, which does have a past fulfillment with Alexander the Great, but has a future fulfillment with the goat well, you have to check out my Daniel A video. The goat is the United States. The horn on the goat is Trump. And Persia, we know, is Iran. With the two horns, which are the two leaders of Iran. So, read Daniel 8 and figure out what that's saying. What I'm saying with this. But we're going to see that. Before the beginning of the day of the Lord, before this peace deal is signed, and as I mentioned earlier, Iran is one of the few countries that's going to be a real problem to getting this peace deal done. And that's why Daniel 8 has to happen before the peace deal is signed. So, once that happens, according to my understanding, we have a month or less left. So let's be prepared. Let's spread the gospel. Let's spread the love of Jesus Christ. Let's allow His Spirit to shine through us. In everything we do, in everything we say, in all our actions. People need to be warned of the coming calamity. Because this world is about to be destroyed. The judgment of God is coming to this world. In, in particular, this country... And many, 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 many people are going to die soon. It's written in the Bible and it will be fulfilled. So we need to play our part and warn the people. We need to sound the alarm. We need to preach the gospel. We need to 
do whatever he has us to do, whatever he has called us to do individually and together as a body. We need to do and accomplish because his kingdom is coming. And once that time comes, it, it will not delay. We're in a little bit of a delay right now, and the Bible speaks about that. But eventually the, the delay is going to be over. And, in, and I believe that's real soon, this year and next year. Potentially in the next couple of weeks. So we need to be ready. We need to make sure our hearts are right with God. We need to make sure we're doing everything right. We need to have a pure heart, pure mind. And allow His Spirit to work through us and transform us into everything that He wants us to be. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to Him today for the salvation of your soul. For the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus died for us. He lived a perfect life. God requires perfection. And He lived a perfect life. None of us can, and that's why He can save us, and we can't save ourselves. It's only through the blood that he shed on the cross that we can be saved. Because that's the, that's the punishment, that's the uh, sacrifice, the atonement for our sins. The only atonement that can cover our sins. We can't earn our way to heaven. It's only through the blood of Christ. Jesus was prophesied about hundreds and even thousands of years beforehand. Before he came upon the scene. Even going back to the book of Genesis. And the odds. The mathematical odds. Has been calculated by scientists and mathematicians. Have calculated the odds. That one person could fulfill. Even a couple Bible prophecies. And the chances are. You got a better chance of winning mega millions. Five to ten times. Or more in a row. Than one person fulfilling. These prophecies. Even a couple of the prophecies. Proving Jesus to be to be who the Bible says he is. Prophecy proves the Bible. If you don't have a relationship with him, call out to him. And if you don't know if you believe, ask him. Seek him and you will find him. We're living in the last days. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your opportunity for life. Receive life or receive death end of the day because we're all going to be judged we're all going to stand before God and if you're not covered by the blood your destination is the lake of fire which is going to be second, the second death permanent death of both body and soul so choose life we're living in the last days give you life to Jesus Christ thanks for tuning in love you guys shalom